Like a friend of mine usually says, Nigeria was named by someone's side chick. Yeah, we're talking about Flora Shaw. She was described to be the mistress of Lord Lugard. While it is upsetting to know how the name Nigeria came about to be, it is even more upsetting to know how exactly the country Nigeria came about to be. Check out this video and I'll meet you guys at the end. But I just found out something crazy about the origins of Nigeria that shocked the hell out of me. Nigeria was never meant to be a country. It was something else entirely. In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what I discovered. Oh, and I want to acknowledge Burner Boy for bringing my attention to this in his song, Another Story, on his album, African Giant. Thank you for inspiring this video. And all of you, let Burner Boy know he got to me, and now I'm sharing this information with you. The creation of Nigeria was never about democracy, never about Christianity. It was all about money, business, and profit. None of it for us. Pay attention. The area now known as Nigeria was called the Slave Coast up to 1870. This was the point at which the British had stopped slave trading and moved on to palm oil as their primary commodity out of Nigeria. One of the main suppliers of palm oil was the Benin Kingdom. And you have to watch my video of one of the greatest African kings most of you have never heard of, Oba of Oranwen. This is an important story for me personally because I am from that region. So they are my people. And his fight with the empire over palm oil is one of the greatest stories of African colonial history. Anyway, everyone wanted palm oil, and especially the British. A man called George Goldie set up the United African Company in 1879, which was then changed to the National African Company. He structured the palm oil business in the Niger Delta region. And by 1884, he had a monopoly that the British could exploit. So in 1886, Goldie violated the agreement he had made with the chiefs and moved his operations into River Niger and Benue. The company was also renamed at this point to Royal Niger Company. Goldie tricked the chiefs into signing unfair trade deals, giving Goldie exclusive rights to export palm oil instead of what the chiefs thought would be free trade. These contracts were written in English, a language we didn't understand, and based on laws that were not our own. Now, guys, this is similar to something I learned when I was in university about the deals done with the Native Americans in what is now known as the United States of America. Very similar thing where deals were done in contracts in English with laws that had nothing to do with the Native Americans. There was a meeting called the Berlin Conference in 1884 to 1885, set up by Germany's first chancellor, Otto van Bismarck. This was where the colonial powers discussed how to carve up Africa and structure trade across the pieces of our continent that they would take. We were not a part of this conversation. <laughs> the best way to think of this is like the NBA draft. Guys were out there making bids between lunch breaks and spa sessions. At this conference, the kingdom of Opobo was given to Britain. When King Jaja of Opobo tried to export his own palm oil, he was accused of obstructing commerce and then exile. How crazy is that? And on his way home in 1891, he was poisoned with a cup of tea. Guys, I couldn't make this stuff up. The Jaja of Opobo story made other chiefs in the region very wary of their deals with the British Empire. King Koko of Nembe Brass was one of those chiefs. He tried to take down the Royal Niger Company and attacked the company headquarters in Akasa by Elsa on January 29, 1895. King Koko captured 60 white men and lost 40 of his own soldiers. He used the 60 hostages to demand he be allowed free trade, the agreement he believed he had signed with the British company in the first place. They refused and he killed 40 of his hostages. The British Royal Navy retaliated by leveling the city of Brass completely on February 20th, 1895. King Koko went into exile and the British not only took control of the palm oil he once had, but also fined the people of his kingdom 500 pounds as well as confiscating their weapons. Tragically, King Koko committed suicide in exile in 1898 after being branded an outlaw by the British company that had taken his kingdom palm oil and reputation. The Royal Niger Company sold its territory to the British government for £865,000 in the late 1800s. This territory was known as Nigeria. In 1914, the Southern Protectorate and Northern Protectorate was combined by Lord Lugard. And like that, the Royal Niger Company was rebranded as a country, which would gain independence on October 1st, 1960. Lugard is a place in Nigeria today, like there's a street called Lugard in Ikoi. 
The Royal Niger Company changed its name to the Niger Company Limited, and it was then acquired by Unilever. Unilever still operates in Nigeria to this day. And that, my brothers and sisters, is how Nigeria came to be. We have a long way to go to fix the country, and it starts with the February elections. But we won't ever have a hope and a solution to our problems if we don't know how they started. Remember, it's not about asking anyone else to fix this. This is about knowing your history. Nigeria was never a country we created. It was a company designed by colonizers for profits. And a lot of the infrastructure put in place for that siphoning of resources out of our land are still very much in place today. Crude oil simply replaced palm oil and soon lithium may replace crude oil. I feel angry not just for what happened to my ancestors, but the fact that I wasn't taught about this in school in Nigeria and that our children are not being taught about these things now. Nigeria is about to have the most important elections in our history. The results will affect not only our country, but the entire region of West Africa and in turn the rest of the world. Because you know that our resources are fueling a lot of people. Every Nigerian going to the polls should know everything about who we are and what we're up against and the creation of Nigeria. Yeah, that's the history of how Nigeria came to be. And the company Unilever is very much still active, not only in Nigeria, but in other countries across the continent. They are buying lands and doing God knows what. Whatever it is they are doing is definitely not going to be to our advantage. Just imagine having the company that started the business that then became your country, Nigeria, still running in your country. That is wild. When I learned this history, I could not see my country, Nigeria, the way I once saw it before. Sadly, many Africans in Africa think they've been promoted when they are finally employed by these multinationals who are in fact responsible for destruction of the country, like Shell, Unilever, just to name a few. Although Nigeria was created as a business venture to enrich the British, Nigerians should keep coming up with ways to make Nigeria become a country that favors the Nigerians and not the British. But what I want to talk about right now is why are we still bearing the name Nigeria? Why are we still bearing the name that was given to us by colonizers? I have said it before numerous times that I hate the fact that I have to identify as a Nigerian because I understand what that identity symbolizes. In order for someone to name you, they have to have power over you. And when they name you, they decide on your identity. And when you accept the name that they gave you, you are also accepting the identity that came with this name. You are also acknowledging that, yes, truly, they do have power over you. When you name something, you own it. It belongs to you. What name are we bearing and who gave us that name? The fact that we are moving around and navigating this world with an identity that is not even ours, an identity that we did not decide on, is insane. I am not Nigerian. I am an Asian girl and partly Urobo too. That is my identity. Have anyone ever noticed how our true identities have become our second identities? Let me explain. Somehow we've become Nigerian first before we're even Ishekiri, Kalaba, Hausa, Yoruba, Urobo, Ijo. Because when someone asks you where you are from, you don't say you are from Igbo land. You don't say you are from the Benin kingdom. You say you are Nigerian. Your Nigerian identity is now your primary identity and your true identity became your secondary identity. An identity that neither you or your ancestors decided on is now your primary identity. If no one else would say it, I would say it. That's messed up. If it were within my power, I would have shared the identity Nigerian off of me a long time ago. Don't get me wrong, I love my country and I love my countrymen, but the identity Nigerian isn't ours. If we must have a central name, we, the people, need to name ourselves and decide on our own identities. Guys, I know I went on a rant there. I was actually talking to Nigerians when I made that video. But you know, this is not an only Nigerian problem. It's actually a continental problem, right? This identity um, topic that we're on right now is a continental problem as there are other countries in africa that are still bearing names that were given to them by the colonial hoodlums right we have some countries that did change their names good for them then we have countries like nigeria and the other of them that you know didn't change their names so it's this identity stuff that um we have to deal with 
right? Having people come to our own home and name us, that's insane, right? But when we leave the continent as well, we know that our family in the diaspora are dealing with the exact same issues, right? Because they had names that were, you know, forced on them as well. You know, they had their identities taken away from them as well. And just to be clear, this is not me saying that when it comes to this topic of identity, us on the continent and, you know, our family in the diaspora is the exact same thing because obviously it's not it's you know a different level entirely what happened to our family in the diaspora in regards to the topic of identity and whilst we understand that what happened in the past happened and unfortunately we cannot change that um i believe moving forward that there are decisions that we can make um, to re-identify ourselves how we want to be identified right i hope you guys could understand what i was trying to say here i hope my meaning came across well because lately my vocabulary has not been vocabulary in and let's not even talk about the tongue ties i have been experiencing lately sometimes i'm like oh my god i wish i could just make the entire video in pidgin english <laughs> because it's crazy but anyways guys we've come to the end of this video um yeah that's it about nigeria the history the origin of nigeria and you know who named us it's crazy it's wild it's annoying it's heartbreaking it's sad it's all of that right but um we move yeah we move let me know down below in the comment section what you think about this video and i'll see you guys in the next one